This video explains how to set column names within the aggregate function using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with lines two and three of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame is appearing, which is called data. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data contains six rows and two columns, whereby the first column contains values and the second column is a group indicator. Now let's assume that we want to group our data using the aggregate function. Then we might apply the code that you can see in line five. So in this line of code, I'm applying the aggregate function and within the aggregate function, I'm specifying that I want to group our values based on the grouping column. Then I'm specifying the name of our data set and I'm specifying that I want to take the sum of each group. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new data frame, which is called data default. So if you run line five of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data set is appearing, which is called data default. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our new data frame. And as you can see, we have aggregated our data because now we have only two rows in our data and the first row is showing the first group and the second row is showing the second group and the second column, which is called value, shows the sum within each group. However, at this point, you can also see that the names of these columns have been set automatically. So let's assume that we want to change the column names of this output. Then we can apply the code that you can see in lines seven and eight. So in these lines of code, I'm using the aggregate function once again. And in this case, I'm applying exactly the same syntax as in the previous example. However, this time I'm also using the setNames function in combination with this code. And within the setNames function, I'm also specifying the column names of the columns of our output. And then I'm storing the output of this in another data frame, which is called data name one. So if you run lines seven and eight of the code, you can see that a new data frame object is appearing at the top right, which is called data name one. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our new data frame. And as you can see, this data frame contains the same values as the previous output data frame. However, this time we have set the column names of our output to X1 and X2. So in this example, I have shown how to use the setNames function to specify the column names of an output generated by the aggregate function. However, it's also possible to specify the column names of the output already within the aggregate function. And this is what I want to show you in the next example of this tutorial, starting in line 10 of the code. And in these lines of code, I'm using once again the aggregate function. However, this time I'm also using the list function and within the list function, I'm specifying the column names of our output and I'm also specifying the corresponding columns from our input data frame. So if you run lines 10 to 12 of the code, you can see that another output is created at the top right, which is called data name two. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the same data frame as in the previous example. However, this time we have specified the column names within the aggregate function itself. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.